How can I have a conversation with my fiancé about a subject he doesn't want to talk about? My fiancé has a bit of a troubled history. I knew that when we got together. He has some mental issues, which I attributed to years of being bullied. Only recently I managed to figure out the main cause. He experienced something extremely traumatizing. I had completely underestimated the severity of the event. He is very apologetic. This seems to stem from feelings of guilt about the traumatic event. See also my previous question for context. I believe he should go to therapy. I've tried initiating the conversation at a moment he is feeling okay, but as soon as I mention therapy, he says he is fine and shuts me down. On the other hand, as soon as I even mention the type of event, he gets upset, irrational and unreasonable. At those times he doesn't want to hear about therapy either. In the longest conversation we've managed to have about therapy, he mentioned that he tried it shortly after the event. He said it didn't help, so he stopped going. This was before we met, I think about 10 years ago. I'd like to have a conversation about therapy with him, without being shut down immediately. I do not want to force him to go. Instead I'd like to help him take away the irrational reasons for not going, so he can make a more rational judgment about finding help. A small note, my brother experienced something very similar recently and is currently in therapy. I could maybe use my brother in this, but I wish to be very careful with that, because his grief is very fresh. I'm Dutch, he is English, we both live in Netherlands. I have depression and anxiety. I had it for years and it took me a very long time for me to finally be able to reach out and see a therapist for help. First of all, you need to know that only one conversation probably won't make you so willing to see a therapist. There is a lot of stigma around therapists and mental health and it won't go away overnight. If you want your so to seriously consider the option of seeing a mental health professional, you need to normalize this subject for him. Make it clear that having mental health issues is nothing to be ashamed of, and that having anxiety issues is just like having a cough that won't go away. If you are not doing it already, here are a few things that you should start doing. Start talking about your mental health. Like me, my mother has depression. However, she never talks about it. She never talks about how bad she sometimes feels or how worried her cancer made her. As a child, this behavior led me to believe that I should never, ever, talk about bad things to her. That not being okay was a sign of weakness and that it was a very shameful thing. Don't do that to your so. Talk to him about the bad things. Be vulnerable with him. Ask for help when you need it. Talk to him about asking other people for help. This way, he might start realizing that it's okay to need help and that it's okay to ask for it. Do. Not. Make jokes about people needing a therapist. Do not make jokes about people being crazy. And if someone makes such a joke around you, make sure to tell them that such a joke is not okay. When I was little, I thought that psychologists were for crazy people and that being one of those people was very bad. As such, it was really clear to me that I should never go see one. Because, in my mind, it was better to be dead than crazy. And psychophobic jokes about crazy people was what led me to that conclusion. Don't let your so believe that it's better to be dead than crazy. It's not. Having bad mental health is okay. Being crazy is okay. Depressed people have value. Bipolar people have value. Schizophrenia people have value. Having mental health issues doesn't end your life. You can still have a job, a home, several loved ones and anything else you can dream of. Now, here are some of the things I needed the most to hear before I was finally able to ask for help. But please, note that this will not convince your so the first time he hears it. He will need time to process it and, probably, to hear it again before being able to fully accept it. Yes, you could keep going without seeing a therapist. But why suffer when seeing one might make you feel better? There is nothing wrong with taking medication. People with bad sight wear glasses. So, why shouldn't people with depression take medication? It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to need help. You are not weak from asking for help. Asking for help is one of the most difficult things I ever did. Recognizing that you need help and asking for it makes you brave, not weak. Please, ask for help when you need it. Here are some other things that you might need to know. When I'm feeling bad, I always forget how I was happy before. It's like happiness never existed in my life. And when I'm feeling well, it's the opposite. I forget how bad I was and I always minimize it. You said that you tried talking to your so at a moment when he was feeling okay. Try the opposite. It took me years to finally ask for help because my unwell me was too unwell to make a phone call and my well me made me feel like I didn't really need the help. 
When I finally reached for help, it was for two major reasons. I was truly convinced that there was no shame in asking for help, even if I ended up not really needing some. I had gathered concrete evidence that I, indeed, needed help and was not exaggerating how bad I felt. This concrete evidence took the form of a diary where I would write when I wasn't well. Then, by reading it when I was well, I was able to truly see how unwell I was. I was able to trust myself again and knew that, indeed, this part of me needed help. More reading. A somewhat related answer about how to get my wife to accept bisexuality before our daughter comes out of the closet? Led by example. Normalize the subject. Share your knowledge. As a side note, please know that you often need to try several different therapists before finding one that suits you. It's hard, draining and frankly discouraging, but it's always worth it in the end.